I have to give him the mic first, so he'll be putting his shoes on. And He has a saying, if you've seen the son, you've seen the father, so I'm going to give him the mic first. Because <laughs> usually if I start, he gets five minutes at the end when half the people have gone home. But I do have something to say if, you, if there's any time left. <laughs> we doing good tonight? I'm telling you, we have been back to back to back to back to back to back conferences. It's been awesome. But starting on the 15th, we're doing 17 days of revival in Edmonton. It's not that far away, and there are a lot of French people live in Edmonton. So um, we just want to encourage you to come all the way to Edmonton. We're going to have 17 days. You guys, we are believing for revival right now. And uh, it, not just believing, seeing it. And so God is about to do something. He promised me um, eight years ago that, that world revival would come in a time of world conflict. That. How many don't like the second part? However, we are going to see, and we are already having a move of God. I'm not talking about good meetings or good conferences. I'm talking about extended revival meetings. So that's where we're going. That's what the prophets have spoken. We've had a number of dreams. Uh, Jedediah Tam emailed me and told me I had to start. And I know that it's the timing of the Lord. We're moving into extended meetings, revival. We're going after miracles, signs, and wonders, and souls, and that's it. So, the, you know, tonight, who knows what's going to happen. Sammy's going to share. We, we spent two days with Carey Price. Can you imagine that? Two days with Carey Price. He came out and did. Sammy's going to share. And, you know, he's an amazing guy, reads his Bible, loves the Lord, and doesn't go to a church in Montreal. He told me he, he, there's a chaplain for the team that he sees. And uh, I thought, well, this might be a good tr church for him to come. But anyway, uh, here's Sammy. <laughs> awesome. Can I grab that picture? Because, yeah, nobody ever believes me. We have a whole bunch. Yeah. Perfect. So, how are we doing? We good? I'm just trying to get my breath back here from playing drums. How many know drummers can be preachers too? It's a miracle. Short preachers, it's true. Um, I had to come up first because if I didn't, my dad would be talking for an hour and a half. You wouldn't care, the glory would show up, but I would care. <laughs> because I feel like God was speaking to me at the drum set. I don't want to miss this. Um, you know, we, we just hosted an amazing event, actually, to give you guys the proof. Carrie Price came out to our event a little while ago, July 10th. And Chris and I have a, a not-for-profit organization also with Voice of Revival called Play for Life, where our vision is to help kids at risk around the world, especially help rescue kids out of child trafficking. How many know every child is called to be free? Amen. And um, one thing that we felt like the Lord said was in this season that we're going to see the righteousness and the justice of God established on the earth like never before. How many are believing for that? Amen. Not just for the world, but how many here for your kids? Amen. And, um, and so, because the Bible says that his throne basically is established on what? Righteousness and justice. It is. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, there's a massive attack against, you know, against the church today on righteousness and justice. Because the enemy is afraid of God establishing his throne over this region. How many know when God establishes his throne over Montreal, over Quebec... The devil's got to move out, amen? Because how many know that when the throne is established, everything has to come into alignment? And so when we were worshiping, I got a vision, and what I saw was through your praise, but also through some of you, you've got an incredible heart for justice and righteousness. I felt like the Lord was saying, it's creating a foundation for God's throne to come, and God can sit over this region. How many want God to sit on this area, amen? How many want the river to flow? Amen? How, like, seriously, the river of God to flow, touching every church, people getting rocked by God, life coming in, revival to live again. Amen? How many want to live again? How many of our churches are called to live again? And part of it is, is when the river flows. But also, did you know where the source of the river is from? Revelations 22. Talks about the throne. There's a river. And it flows from where? The throne. So the source is the throne. And so how many know when God's throne gets established, the river's going to flow as well? And so when we establish his throne, I believe in this season, we're about to get a radical revelation of how powerful worship is. Because in this time, God is saying, I want to release my righteousness and justice in areas where you least expect it. And how many know God is going to radically change the child trafficking in this generation? I'm believing for it with all my heart. I'm going to die believing that we're going to see every single kid rescued every single kid that's been under oppression. Like Job said, I plucked the innocent out of the wicked's teeth. I literally broke the fangs of the wicked and plucked the innocent out of their teeth. That's the season that we're in, friends, right now. That's what God's going to do. In the middle of revival, we're going to have incredible works of reformation. 
or the Lord's going to speak to the city of Montreal and all of a sudden the drug and alcohol addiction is going to go to zero because of revival. How many people are going to flood this church because of revival? Because in this house, there's going to be answers that people are looking for that they can't find out there. But because of the righteousness of justice, people are going to step into this place and they're going to receive divine wisdom. Amen? Amen. And so if you got your Bibles, turn with me to Ecclesiastes 10 verse 10. And so I didn't get to share completely about Play for Life. I will in a second here. But uh, to let you know, we had Kerry Price. How many know who Kerry Price is? Probably almost everyone. Um, he plays for a lowly team. No, I'm joking. <laughs> a better team than me, ours. I know I am. Um, uh, you know, the Montreal Canadiens, he's a great guy. And the Lord spoke to us and said, if you would take after the least of these, how many of God will bring in those who the world thinks are great? Amen? Amen. How many of the, the Lord can take the least of these and sit them beside princes and kings? Your Bible talks about that. The, those who are in low places, bring them before princes and kings. And so the Lord spoke to us about an organization called Play for Life and how we are going to affect this next generation is through entertainment. How many know today, these right here, most of you, they control your life. And if you're honest, you would say yes. You know what? It's called social media. It's called entertainment. Did we know today, friends, that the majority of our kids are getting discipled through Xbox, PlayStation, the movies, music right now. And you can almost, I could, like, if I stepped in your kid's room, I could almost tell you who is mentoring your kids by the posters that they have on their wall, what they have in their room. And it's all through entertainment. And here's what the Lord spoke to me. What has your attention has power over you. That's why people spend billions of dollars of advertisement because they're after your attention. Because if they have your attention, they have power over you. And so the Lord spoke this to me. He said, Sam, I want you to come up with a creative idea that's going to combat the world's entertainment. And you're going to bring in ish righteous and justice issues like rescuing kids out of the child trafficking. And people are going to get on board. And a whole bunch of holy rollers are going to be running the whole thing. I don't know about you. That's pretty awesome. Because praise God, I love every organization. But I'll tell you what, every organization would be better with the glory. Amen? <laughs> and so the Lord started to speak to Chris and I about using sports as a place because every kid loves to have fun. And if you're honest with yourselves, every single person here likes to have fun. We're all kids at heart. And so we use entertainment like ball hockey events, um, which we had Carrie Price at. Um, we do basketball events, skateboarding events. And all the proceeds go towards helping kids at risk. So every kid that plays feels important because they're not just playing in the moment, but they're also rescuing kids out of child trafficking, giving them a better life. And I don't know about you, but when a kid finds value and importance, he'll run towards that. Without vision, the Bible says, my people what? Perish. And so what we do is we give kids vision that they don't have to be leaders of tomorrow. They can be leaders of today by the choices that they make right now in the moment. And so it's awesome. And so God's given us incredible favor. And I want to share a quick thing with you. That'll be a miracle because if you know the Robinsons, we like to talk. Uh, Ecclesiastes 10 verse 10, it says this, if the ax is dull and he does not sharpen its edge, then he must exert more strength. Say strength. strength. I got to ask you a question. How many here you feel like you've been using a lot of strength in this season? Or I'll put a different word. How many here you felt like you've used a lot of energy in this season? And if we're honest with ourselves, a lot of us today, we've used a lot of energy for very little result. Amen? How many feel like that? How many have had a prophetic word over your life? Put up your hand. I'll give you a better example. Put up your hand if you ever had a prophetic word. Probably most of us. Now, how many love the prophetic? You know, that's probably why you're here, hopefully. You love Jesus. You love the prophetic. You love the glory. If you don't, we'll lay hands on you afterwards. You can't run away. We've locked the doors, so it's all good. But like most of us, we've all had prophetic words and praise God for those words. But how many want to see those words come to pass? You know, I, I joke around all the time. I'm like, man, I love words about finances. And praise God when you get a prophetic words about finances. I remember for myself, I'm like, Lord, thank you for that word. Next thing you know, I see a nice car go by. I'm like, Jesus, I claim that word for finances. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? And then next thing you know, a couple weeks go by, the word doesn't come to pass. Next thing you know, you get another word, prophetic word. We call that confirmation. And we're like, oh, thank you, Jesus. You still noticed me. God, I thank you that you're so good. And the next thing you know, months go by. Now, you know, it's no longer exciting. It's kind of cute, like a puppy. 
Praise God for the word, but it's like, God, it's been months, some of you years. And then when years go by and you get the same word again, it's no longer cute. You know what it's like? God, show me the money. <laughs> Praise God for the word, but show me the money. Where's the dinero? If you're laughing, you know what I'm talking about. Because you want to see something come to pass. And so, what do you do? And here's what I felt like the Lord said. A lot of us are in this season where we have all these prophetic words. And praise God, you can shine them up all you want. You can put them on your wall. But how many know if you die with a whole bunch of prophetic words, it's not going to do you too much good. And it's not going to do Jesus too much good. Because you can't go to Jesus and be like, look at all these prophetic words. You know what he's going to say? What am I going to do with them? <laughs> so here's my question. What do you need? to see your prophetic words come to pass? That is the million dollar question. What do you need to see your prophetic words come to pass? And here's what the Lord spoke to me. He said, Sam, I'm releasing what you need to see your prophetic word come to pass. It's found in Ecclesiastes 10 verse 10. Look what it says at the very end. I love this. It says, if the ax is dull and one does not sharpen its edge, then he must exert more strength. But wisdom has the advantage of giving success. How many here you want to have success in your life? I'm not talking, listen, we can all put up our hands for success. It's not a bad word. We need success in our life. And it's wisdom that we need. I feel like the Lord is saying this, I'm about to give my church the most precious commodity that they could have. You know what that is? It's not more power because God's given you more power. You know what it is? It's wisdom. Because the Lord spoke this to me. There's many people here today, you're highly favored from the Lord. But can I tell you something? Favor alone won't do you much. Because I've been there. We're favored. Chris and I are so favored. There's my wife in the back. And she's so amazing. Can you wave? You gave our baby away. Hopefully she'll come back tonight. We'll see. We have a beautiful daughter, Kaylin. She's a little over six months, almost. Get into seven months pretty soon. Wow, on the 21st. Talk about a life change. And here's what the Lord spoke to me, though. We need wisdom. We need wisdom because a lot of us has favor. But the Bible says this, Jesus grew in wisdom and favor with God and man. And so often we're saying, God, I need more favor. You know what God is saying? You need wisdom and learn how to apply your favor. Because you know what favor is supposed to do? It's supposed to give you influence. And here's what the Lord spoke to me. He said, Sam, tell my people this. This is a time where I'm about to release my wisdom, combine it with their favor, and it's going to give them incredible influence. How many of you want to have influence in your city? How many of God's called you to have godly influence right here? To shift the atmosphere over this region. Amen. To see people get healed everywhere that we go. I was, I was thinking about the, um, the distraught there. Is that right? The, the, what, what, what do we call it? The distraught. There we go. Perfect. Beautiful mall. I got to tell you, I got my shoes at this mall. Beautiful shoes, by the way, to let you know. Very nice shoes. And if you say otherwise, I'll pray for you too. But I was thinking about this. How many of God's called us to have influence over that region? Yeah. And that God wants to, to mess up some shoppers. How many ladies like to shop? Yeah. Can I tell you something better than just shopping? Glory shopping. <laughs> Moving in the glory while you shop. Getting words and all that, seeing people get saved. How many know that's what we're called to do? Everywhere we go, see miracles, signs, and wonders. But for some of us, though, the reason why we're not in this is because we're lacking wisdom. And here's what the Lord spoke to me through a dream. Because a little while ago, like I feel like many of you, in this dream, I was in this beautiful room. But you know what? I, I was in a place where I was like, man, there's got to be something more. And I saw this door in front of me and I knew behind the door was everything that my heart wanted. But can I tell you something? The door is locked. And I went up to the door and I tried everything. I tried praying over the door. I tried kicking in the door. I tried punching on the door. Nothing. And I got frustrated and I turned around and there was a table behind me. And I said, God, what do I do? So I went up to the table and I was so frustrated. I said, God, what do I do? How do I get into this next door? How do I get into this next season? I remember slamming my fist on, the, on this table and all of a sudden, the father appeared on my left-hand side. And he looked incredibly young and incredibly old at the same time. And he smiled at me like my frustration was almost amusing him. <laughs> How many know the Bible says that he sits in heaven and he laughs? Amen? Now, he's not laughing at the situation you're in, but how many know when you have all the answers, you're pretty happy? 
And I'm here and I'm frustrated. I'm like, God, what's going on? And he smiles at me. And I turn and here's what the father says. Sam, you need to pray that the key would return in this season. I'm like, pray that the key would return. And then he leaves. I'm like, what do I do? Then I thought, he said, pray. So I'm going to pray. So I closed my eyes in my dream and I said, God, I pray that the key would return. And as I opened my eyes, here's a silver key. Had the word wisdom on it. I remember picking up this key, going to the door, putting the key in the lock, and all of a sudden, the door opened. And this wave of glory came. Wow. And it just hit me from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. It hit me in my dream. And I woke up getting rocked by God. And the Lord said, you received the key. And here's what happened. That key, friends, opened up a door called Play for Life, where we're, you, we're with professional athletes, influencing so many young people. We had so many people come out. And next year, if I told you who's coming out, it would make your head spin if you're a hockey player. <laughs> and the people that we've been, we've been working with, I'll, I'll just, I don't want to take too much time. But um, I'll just say this. God gave us the, the revelation of, or the key of wisdom for Play for Life. And so, the Lord started to speak to me and say, Sam, I want to host sporting events for kids, not second-rate sporting events, but the best sporting events. Because how many know heaven is filled with excellence? And how many know there's finances in heaven, amen? And then we're called to do amazing events. And so the Lord spoke to me about a basketball event that we were going to host, a three-on-three basketball event. And the Lord's like, I'll tell you where to host your venue, where to host your event, um, but just be open. I'm thinking, okay, Lord, you want me to host a three-on-three basketball event to help rescue kids? I don't know how this is all going to work. I have no connections. Lord, you're going to have to do it. How many know God has to do it for some of us? Amen. We're in a situation right now where we're like, God, the only way my dreams are going to come to pass is if you help. And I remember praying, being like, okay, God, where do you want me to go? And then the next week, a friend of mine came up to me and said, Sam, why don't you come with me to my my son's three-on-three basketball event? I'm like, great, okay. Come with me to the Richmond Olympic Oval. I'm like, I don't know what that is, but I'll go with you. So I get in the car and we drive. How many have ever heard of the Richmond Olympic Oval before? The Richmond Olympic Oval is, in 2010, they built this facility for speed skating. It's a $240 million facility. It won Architectural Design Award for, in the world for 2010. It's 140,000 square feet. You can stick your bell center in there and there's enough room for a parking lot. It's massive. And I go to this facility and I'm like, are you kidding me? It hosted the world there. People from all around the world came. $240 million. 140,000 square feet overlooks the ocean. I'm thinking, God, what in the world? So I go. And I'm like, I'm going in this facility, 60 foot. You know, some of us have been there, 60 foot ceiling. Beautiful. And we go in. And I'm like, wow, this is awesome. And then the Lord speaks to me. Sam, I want you to host your basketball event here. And I'm looking around. I'm like, God. I know how much facilities cost because we host a lot of conferences. God, I can't afford the toilets in this place. <laughs> so I went downstairs and I, you know, just out of faith, I said, how much does this place cost? Oh, they're like roughly fifteen to $20,000 an hour. <laughs> Can I tell you something? I knew I couldn't afford the toilets then. Like, I actually couldn't afford the toilets. So what do you do? I was too embarrassed to talk to anybody else. My friend was there. I'm thinking, God, what, are my, what is my friend going to think? I want to rent this facility. So I go home and pray. And I wait a week. And then I go back. I'm like, God, what am I supposed to do? Then the Lord reminded me, you need to ask for wisdom. Friends, there's a lot of people here. You're wondering what to do. And the Lord is making it very simple. You know what it is? Ask for wisdom. Pray that the key of wisdom would return. Because you're blessed and highly favored. God wants to give you wisdom so that it can produce influence. Because you're called to influence this world. So I go in, God, what's the wisdom? Here's what the Lord speaks to me. Talk to the secretary. I'm like, God, talk to the secretary? Not a manager? The secretary? So I go up, what do you say? You have no money. And now how many know it's not good to ask for a facility with no money? That doesn't work. How many know you can't, you'd be like, charge it to my faith. It doesn't happen. So I went up and here's the secretary. How may I help you? And I looked at her, I'm like, and I basically shared everything in two minutes. I'm like, you know, this is what we're doing. This is what we want. I'm like, so raw. Almost crying. I'm like, God, help. And I'm waiting. And I look at the secretary and she's crying. And I'm thinking, she believed it. <laughs> she's like, this is awesome. Can you talk to my manager? I'm like, yes. 
And then I talked to the manager. The manager's like, how can I help you? And again, it was like I just, blah, everything. <laughs> no structure, no chart plan. I know that's tough if you go to Pastor Dave's church without a chart plan. None. Sir passion. Listen, I love Pastor Dave. He's my father-in-law. And he's letting me stay at my, you know, at his house. Please don't kick me on the street. No. But what do you do? So again, I shared. And this guy's like, I like your vision. Talk to my boss. And again, I'm thinking, they believe in this. I don't even know if I believe it all. <laughs> How many ever feel like that? Your vision's so big. And you get into a place where you're like, God, I don't even know. Can I, is this actually you? And so next thing you know, I talked to another manager. And in a week, I actually met with the guy that actually runs the whole entire facility. 140,000 square feet, $240 million venue. And I'm like, God, here I am with this guy. And he's like, how can I help you? And I'm at his, you know, he has got a nice desk and I got a little chair. <laughs> and I sit down in the little chair and here he is. And he's like, you know, share your vision. So I shared. Now, he wasn't saying anything. And I'm a preacher. I like to go off response. And there was nothing. It was like the black hole of space looking at me. And I'm trying to speak and it's just like, it's just going, getting sucked in. And I finished. I try to, you know, and actually if you're a Robinson, if you get nervous, you keep talking. <laughs> and so I, I talked a little more to sh thinking, you know, maybe I can fill in some more gaps, nothing. And then I finished and I'm, you know that awkward like 20 seconds of silence and you're wondering like, God, what is someone going to say? And I'm thinking in my head, he's going to throw me out, security, out the door. And he looks at me and he smiles. He says, Sam, I like your vision. He's like, here's what I want to do. How about I give you the facility for basically the cost of the lights? Which I'll tell you this, the cost of the lights to run that facility for a whole day is a little over $3,000. Wow. So. So. I don't know about you. 15... 15 to 20,000 or an hour, $3,000 for the day. I'll take the 3,000 for the day. Thank you. And if you love to shop, amen. How many of you know that's a good deal, amen? The kingdom has great deals. So I'm excited, but I don't show it, of course, because, you know, I have to be dignified and everything. So I go down to my car, and I remember finding out how much it costs. And how many know you can do a little dance in your car, a little glory dance? And I got excited, and then the Lord spoke to me. He said, Sam, what else do you need? Oh, my God, what else do you need? I just got a $240 million facility for the cost of the lights. And he said, what else do you need? Because you're favored, but I want to give you influence. So what do you need to pray for? And I said, Lord, I need the wisdom. So God, I need, you know, some way to bring advertisement. I said, God, can you give me advertisement? And so the Lord started to speak to, to me about phoning up a radio station called Team 1040. Ever, you guys ever heard of team stations before? You guys have one, I think, Team 690. It's your largest, I think, English speaking, or, or maybe both, I don't know. Sports radio station. We have a sports radio station called Team 1040. It gets a million listeners a week. I don't know, that's a lot of people. And that's a lot of yakking. And so the Lord says, I want you to phone, phone them up and see what they'll do for you. I'm like, God, the largest sports radio station, a million people a week listen to that show. So God, what am I supposed to do? Because remember, wisdom. I've got favor. I need wisdom. So Lord, where am I supposed to go? What's the wisdom? Just phone them up. I said, God, phone them up. Phone them up. Who do I talk to? The secretary. Oh my God, the secretary again? So what do I do? I grab my phone. I Google Team 1040. I phone the number. Ring, 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 ring. And then all of a sudden I hear, hi, this is Team 1040. How may I help you? And so again, what do you do? You just share the vision. And again, nothing. Just straight vision. No polish. Just talk. And all of a sudden she's like, wow, that's really good. Do you want to talk to my manager? I'm like, Again? How many know you start to get on a roll? With the favor of the Lord, if you start to use the favor, you get into momentum. And there is what I call such momentum that takes place where you're no longer looking for people. People are looking for what you have. But you got to learn how to start up your favor. A lot of you have incredible favor. You just don't know how to use it because you're lacking the keys of wisdom. And so God gave us this, you know, this incredible momentum with Team 1040. And next thing you know, you guys, I'm talking to the manager. They say, you know, what are you doing? And I share, listen, this is what we want to do. We want to host a, 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 ball, um, a basketball event to raise funds for kids and all this stuff. They're love it. They're like loving it. You guys, by the end of a week, I'm talking to the vice president of Bell Media Canada. Wow. 
who owns all the team stations, by the way. And I meet him on 200th Street Starbucks near my house. And I don't realize how important this guy is. It's like God blocked it from my head. And I show up in jeans and a hoodie. <laughs> now listen, if you know anything about meeting, you know, with people that are, are going to try to give you a deal on stuff, you probably want to look your best. So I show up in my favorite hood because I want to feel comfortable. And this guy comes in and he's in like a three-piece Armani suit. And he's going to watch as big as the sun. Tooch! And you, you know who he is. And I remember, I'm like, oh God, this is going to be so awkward. So I walk up to this guy. I'm like, hi. He's like, Samuel Robinson? I'm like, yeah. He's like, okay, let's, let's sit down. I'm like, oh great, here we go. So I sit down with this guy and I start sharing. He's like, listen, I love what you do. He's like, what about if we give you basically, <laughs> I won't even tell you how massive of a discount this is. Part of it is I wasn't supposed to. But uh, we basically got a month worth of radio ads for the cost of a little over the, the writer's cost. A month, eight ads a day, every single day. Wow. Now, I don't know about you, but that's some pretty good advertisement if you know anything. About a million people a week listen so eight times a day, every single day for a month. Wow. Talking about us. Now, how many know that message about talking about us? I don't care if it's an ad. I don't care if people just think it's a, a three-on-three basketball event. How many know the light of God's God's glory, Shabbat Abba, the light of God's glory is moving through the radio station, touching people's hearts. Amen? Why? Because it's what we do. And Play for Life carries the glory. So guess what? Every ad that's released, it's touching hearts. Every ad is removing darkness. Every ad is giving kids hope and destiny that feel like they have no hope. Why? Because it's who we are. And so everything that we do is filled with the glory. And so I was so excited again. I thought, God, you're amazing. I got this free ads all over, you know, all over BC. It'd be like all over Montreal, all over Quebec. And I got these free, and then I said, God, that's awesome. And here's what the Lord said, what else do you want me to do? I'm like, what? Are you crazy? What else? I'm like, God, I don't have any product. We want to give out prizes for kids. And so the Lord's like, pray that you'd get product. And so we got product. And actually I got this because of these amazing people. Tanya, Tanya came out. And Kristen. So Sports Check. So Kristen comes with me to Sports Check. And she finds the manager. Now listen, if you know my wife, I'll tell you this. She's got incredible favor on her life. And she knows how to use it. And she goes up to the manager and explains our situation. Listen, you know, we want to host a basketball event for kids. And what can you give us? And the guy basically said, you know what? We're going to give you a deal of a lifetime, and the sense, I would even tell you, you guys, for, for a couple of thousand dollars, four, four $4,000 for over $20,000 worth of product wow. for kids. The be good stuff, not, not crazy, good stuff. So we had this event, you guys. Oh, by the way, God completely paid for everything through different business people. And we had this event that we hosted in the Richmond Olympic Oval, again, $240 million facility with over $20,000 worth of product, with ads on the radio for a whole month, eight ads a day. You guys, can I tell you something? When a kid comes in, when your kid comes, or another kid comes in, who's never experienced anything like this, never been in an atmosphere like this, and when they come into a facility like this, it just screams value and importance. You know why? Because the world doesn't give them value and importance. And there's so many kids that are looking for a cause to run to. They just don't know where to go. And we had these kids, out, and I'll be honest with you, if, unless you come to an event, I encourage you to come out. We, we're hosting another hockey event next year, July 11th. If you know anything about hockey, um, uh, some players-wise, Carey Price is coming out again. Shane Doan is coming out. And we're just finalizing right now. Carey actually told us, he was going to be our spokesperson for Play for Life. So that's pretty nice for hockey and help us, and help us get other players. And, and so we're, he's like, I'm going to talk to uh, Ryan Getzloff and Brent Seabrook, who are both NHL All-Stars and have played for Team Canada, which is pretty cool. But back to this. We hosted this event, and here's these kids. Some of them have given nothing in life. They came to the event because it was basketball. And you know what's amazing? Is I could give these kids a prophetic word or I could give these kids a pair of free shoes 
And I'll be honest with you, the free shoes meant so much more than just a good word. And I remember these kids getting a pair of free shoes. Some of them, their parents would be crying, saying, who are you guys? Nobody does this. Nobody gives stuff away for free. Nobody treats my child like this. You know why? Because the world, everything has strings attached. And when you're doing an event like this, and it's fun, and it's helping kids and inspiring kids, how many know you touch families and you touch communities? How many know the heart of the community is in its family? And when you can touch the family, you can touch a community, because that's what it is. Community's family. And so the Lord spoke this to us, and out of this, you guys, so many kids got touched. And so now we've been offered to do things like, if, I can't explain everything to you, because some stuff is still in, in very early form, but I'll say this, God has given us so much influence through that one key of wisdom, which is play for life. Where, you know what, I wake up and I love what I do. And here's the word the Lord gave me when I was up there. Some of you today, you don't like what you do, but you do it. And basically you feel like you do it because you have to do it. But the reason why you do it is because you don't know how to start what you really want to do. I'm going to say that again. Some of you today are living, living lives today. You're doing things because you feel like you have to do it because you don't know how to start what you really want to do. Friends, that's why we need wisdom. You know why? Because every single person here has a prophetic word. Every single person here has a destiny. Every single person here is called to do something that they love to do. You know what that love to do is? That's seeing God's kingdom manifest on the earth. Yes, we all have our crosses to pick up. I get that. And there are days when it's not perfect. But I'll say this though. Every single person in here has passion. And for some of us, that passion has died. And I feel like the Lord is saying, I want to revitalize that passion again. I want us to get into a place where we're asking the Lord, Lord, I have all these prophetic words, but I thank you for that key of wisdom to see those prophetic words come to pass. And I believe today God wants to give us those keys of wisdom that are going to open up doors for us that we're going to wake up with so much passion because we're doing things that we love to do. Not just doing things because we have to do them, because we don't know how to start the things that makes our heart burn. How many here want to live a life that your heart burns for? Amen. Here's what I want to do. I felt like the Lord spoke this to me. There are keys in this room today. I believe there are keys of wisdom that God wants to release. And just like for me, when I received that key of wisdom that opened up a door for me, and that I believe was play for life. And listen, Chris and I have a ministry called Voice of Revival. We're believing God for revival in Canada, but at the same time, we're believing God for reformation. And we need both. And for some of you, you're called... Listen, you're called to be a, a releaser of the glory. I know we're all called to see the kingdom come. Some of you are called to be a revivalist. Some of you are called to carry reformation. Some of you are called to see homes completely restored. Some of you are called in the educational sector. Some of you are called in the business sector. And God wants to give you keys so that you can use your favor plus wisdom and give you influence. So that you can do the things, those prophetic words that God has spoken over your life, you can see those things come to pass. And you'll live, your, you'll live your life doing the things that your heart burns for. Amen. But I'll be honest, you know, Dave said something today. He said, talking about surrender all, I believe one of the things that has to happen, if you want to surrender all, you know what one of the things is? We have to let go of our own wisdom. Because too often we're in a place where we have our own wisdom, we have our own ideas of how things work. And I'll be honest with you guys, we don't need another good plan. We don't need another good plan. We don't need another good strategy. You don't need another motivational speech. What you need is an encounter with God that's going to release keys of wisdom that are going to unlock that potential that's inside of you because I'm tired of just prophesying things. I want to see those words come to pass over your life. And I'm speaking to the family here because we've been here many times. And I don't want to just see potential. And I love seeing the good things of God, but I want to see the good things of God and you come to pass. Amen? How many are you ready to see those things come to pass? I believe God wants to release those keys right now. So if you want wisdom today, the Bible says if you, if you lack wisdom, you can ask for it. That's one thing my mom faithfully prayed for me that I believe I stepped into was wisdom beyond my ears. And I know God's given it to me. And he's helped Chris and I in situations where we didn't know what to do, but we asked for wisdom and God gave it to us. 
And I'll be honest with you, for some of you today, the wisdom that God's going to release, we need to make sure our heart is open because even wisdom can be offensive to us. Because the wisdom of God can look different than what we think. And for some of us, I feel like we're going through a season of reprogramming where God is showing you that your breakthrough is here. And for some of us, it's more natural than what we think. Amen? So listen, if you want keys of wisdom today, I want you to stand up right now. God's going to release them. And then I'm going to get my dad up. Hopefully I didn't take too much time, dad. But I just know that there's keys here that the father wants to release to you today that is going to unlock that potential inside of you. That's going to open up doors for you that you can't open up for yourself because you are called today to influence. You are called today to change the atmosphere over this region. And God has given you authority today over this region and the region that you come from to shift the atmosphere to see literally the government of God established over the cities and over this region. And I feel like the Lord is saying this, I see in the spirit right now that there have been cracks in the foundation of Quebec that God wants to fill in in this season, where the devils try to bring in unrighteousness. And there's been things that have happened that are unjust. I feel like the Lord is saying in this season, I'm going to fill the cracks in this province and that this province is going to get a sevenfold restoration in Jesus' name. Where the devil's trying to hold down this province, God is releasing a sevenfold blessing. Seven times greater, but I'll tell you what, it's going to come with the wisdom of God. And for some of you right now, God is going to release these keys. It's going to accelerate you like never before. And so here's what I want us to do. I just want every person that's standing up, lift up your hands right now because these keys are right here. I just see them hanging over your head. And that what we're doing is we're just lifting up our hands as a, just an act of our Father just giving us a gift. And it's also an act of surrender. And here's what I want us to do first, just privately. I just want us to, to ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, is there any way where we have gone away from wisdom in our lives? Just take a second. I'm just going to pray. Father, I just ask that you would show us, Holy Spirit, that you would show us places where we have turned away from wisdom, where we haven't made wisdom the principal thing. Lord, where we've been in a place where we've done good things, but it hasn't been great things, God. Where we've accepted just good plans and not God plans or good strategy and not God's strategy. God, we ask for your forgiveness for not embracing wisdom. Like Proverbs says, embrace wisdom. Holy Spirit, we want to embrace wisdom today because we need it now more than ever. Holy Spirit, we need your wisdom in our families. Holy Spirit, we need your wisdom in our communities. We need your wisdom in this city, in the cities, in the towns, God, in the province of Quebec, God. We need your manifestation of your wisdom. And we can ask for it today. So, Father, we boldly ask today for your wisdom. God, that you would give us wisdom. We cry out for it today, God. We cry out for wisdom. God, we want it with all of our heart. We want the keys of wisdom. So we don't just walk with good prophetic words, but we see those prophetic words manifest in the natural. So God, we just receive it. I just hear right now, I just decree that the keys of wisdom are being released all over this room right now in Jesus' name. Father, I just decree right now that this will be a season where people will see their favor combined with their, that wisdom. It's going to explode into God a whole other level of influence in Jesus' name. I decree for some of you, there are new jobs God is releasing right now. For some of you, there is financial breakthrough. For some of you, there is healing in your bodies right now through the wisdom of God. Oh, there's another levels of provision for you through wisdom. Because in wisdom's hand, there is honor and riches. In wisdom's hand, there is honor and riches. Some of you today, you're asking God for financial breakthrough. It's time to embrace wisdom. Oh, here it is right here. Lord, I just decree it. That financial breakthrough, that strategy to get ahead. Some of you, you've been living in a place of survivability. 
all you can do in your life and you feel like you've just been surviving, just making it by. Father, I thank you that there's a shifting in this season. We're no longer going to just survive, but we're going to thrive in this season. And that Quebec is going to thrive in this season. That Quebec is coming into its greatest hour. And the church of Quebec is coming into her greatest hour. Where it's going to be the head and not the tail. It's going to lead in this season. We just decree it now in Jesus' name. Oh, we just release it. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just release it now in Jesus' name. And we thank you, God. Even after this meeting, there is going to be a releasing of creative ideas. There's going to be a releasing of godly blueprints that are going to open up doors for us that we couldn't open up for ourselves. And Lord, just like you gave us favor with, with NHL hockey players and different people that the world looks to, and God, you said that you would use the kings of this earth for your vision, God. That the Bible says that he holds the heart of a king in his hand. And he can move it any way that he wants to. Father, I thank you. That kind of influence is going to be spread across your church where influential people in the world's eyes are going to come in here and they're going to bow their knee to the name of Jesus. Lord, we just release it now in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Well, you may be seated. Um, Here's what I was going to say for everyone. We've got a whole bunch of these posters as well. Oh, man, I'm getting rocked. We got a whole bunch of these posters, and um, I encourage you to take one. I know here, again, like I said, um, there's a whole lot of people that love Carey Price. If you've got friends that like hockey, and, and um, I encourage you to take one. It's a great promo for us as well. It's all about Play for Life, and people can go on the website, playforlife.ca, and they can see how we're making a difference. And I really, truly believe, guys, we're in our greatest season. Amen? Amen. How many are ready to see that, that favor? get combined with some wisdom so that you're going to carry incredible influence. Amen. And so now I get the privilege. Oh, where are they going to be? Good question. Do you have them? Oh, we got them all in the front. So we're going to put them, we'll put them near the back as the wisdom for my wife is being released. But here's what I want to say, you guys. I want us to keep our hearts open um, tonight because I truly believe with all my heart, Canada is in its greatest season right now. You know, the Lord spoke to my dad about doing extended meetings. And I have to tell you, something is going on right now. I just heard a testimony today uh, in Alberta. A young man just prayed for a guy that was severely um, crippled for years in a wheelchair. And he just walked for the first time And uh, in Alberta. And things are breaking out all over the place where churches are growing in incredible rates. You know why? Because God is stirring the waters of revival in our nation. And so I want us today, if we can, to keep our hearts open. And like a container, make sure, like, I feel like we're supposed to get every last drop. How many of you want every last drop? And I, and I feel that, that God is looking, and you guys are hungry vessels today, and God is not going to disappoint. Amen?